I'm here with Tilly, who's in training for an amazing job. She's training to become a guide dog. And today we'll be talking to the wonderful team at Guide Dogs Victoria. We've made the trip out to Alfington in Melbourne's inner northeast, where I'm catching up with some of the great people at Guide Dogs Victoria. Guide Dogs Victoria have been in operation since 1957 and have been instrumental in ensuring that people with low vision or blindness continue to be active and involved members of the community. I'm about to sit down with Naomi to find out more about this wonderful institution. You've worked for Guide Dogs for uh, over 20 years, is that Correct. right? That's right, yes. And, and tell us a little bit about your role there. Yeah, so I'm the team leader of puppy um, development at Guide Dogs and we have 150 puppies in homes. Wow. Yeah, and so we have um, nine staff members in puppy development who supervise the pups right from eight weeks up to about 15 months of age where they'll come in for assessment. Uh, during that supervision time while we're on the puppy development program, it's um, really important that the dogs are nurtured, well cared, for but socialized into the environments that they'll one day work okay so that's the benefit of having them within someone's home and and being part of their life yeah that's right we have wonderful kennel facilities but to raise them there we wouldn't be able to get the socialization um, and get them accustomed to the environment they'll one day work in so we really do rely on our puppy raising families um, to provide a home and the socialization and care that they require so what sort of things do you look for when you when you're looking for someone that will raise a puppy yeah there's definitely criteria um, involved so um, people have time um, so that the puppy's not left alone more than three hours in a day. Um, and that's uh, to ensure that we avoid unwanted behaviours. Sure. A lot of pet dogs left home during the day would might bark, yep. um, dig, um, and chew um, by ensuring that their needs are met and not leaving them more than three hours is really important. Uh, they must have their own vehicle to get to training and vet clinics when required. Children should be five and above because it takes a lot of time to look after these little babies, make sure they're up, not up to mischief, like chewing sticks, <laughs> and, um, and also that, um, that they're interacting appropriately with children um, five and above. Yeah. So little Hetty here, she's yeah. just five months old, so she's really still kind of at the start of her journey, is that, that right? Yeah, that's right. She's finished her puppy class and she's got her puppy coat now, yep. which means her socialisation can change and go into places where pet dogs aren't allowed. So maybe on a um, into a shopping centre, um, into a news agents, a small IGA or something like that, and um, on public transport. Um, right. So, so the, her trainers, her, her puppy raisers would be start, starting to work on, on behaviours around in those areas? Yeah, so socialising into those areas with the support of their advice. Any time we up the level of socialisation for the puppy, the advisor must be there to see how the dog copes and give support and advice around ensuring that their temperaments are well um, protected and that they're not over threshold and coping well. Okay, yeah. What temperament-wise, what are you looking for for a, for a guide dog? Yeah, so um, definitely a confident dog in their environment, but with low distraction. Okay. Um, you can imagine for a vision impaired person um, that it's important to have um, a dog that is not overly excited by other dogs being around, not picking up food off the ground, and that they can focus on their task. Isn't hand. that a bit of a challenge though with a Labrador? Because I've always heard of Labradors as being like really, really food focused. Yes. Uh, is that? Is that difficult or, or do you choose Labradors for a particular reason? Uh, Labradors definitely are chosen for their adaptability um, so that they can go from puppy raiser to trainer to, um, to um, a, a working guide dog, ensuring that they're getting love and rewarded, they're going to do the job. Okay, so some dogs really prefer just to have one special person, their owner, yeah. but Labradors are a bit more adaptive. Yeah, and where there's love, praise and food, the Labrador is definitely happy to go. Like me. <laughs> Tell me 
a bit about the graduation process. So uh, Hetty is five months old now. You'd expect her to graduate when she is, how old did you say? Probably around about 18 to 20 months okay, of age. Yeah. So there's a long journey for her yeah. to get through. Um, when she's about 15 um, months of age, she'll be assessed to see if she mm -hmm. has what it takes to go into training. Then the training is approximately five months of, of time with a qualified guide dog trainer. Then there's the instructor that works with the person with blindness or low vision. Um, once they've graduated from their training program, which is around about three to four weeks, we would like to be able to acknowledge the success of the dog um, throughout the year with um, having a graduation ceremony. Um, there's certificates and photos and recognition for the puppy raisers um, yeah. achievement and input, our sponsors input, and also the, um, what um, the client has been able to achieve with the dog as well. So it might be a bit of a bittersweet moment for the, the puppy raisers, but pro probably so rewarding to see all yeah, that work yeah. that they put in come yeah. to fruition. That's right. Um, we get a lot of questions about um, to our puppy raisers about how could you do this? I couldn't give it back. How do you yeah. do it? And I like to compare it to um, psychology. We need to be able to tell a different story. So I'm doing this because I love dogs. I'm doing this to help somebody. I'm doing this because um, I'm paying it forward. But it doesn't mean that it's not going to be sadness yeah. and tears at the yeah. end, but it's being able to practice a different story so that we can do this for others. Yeah. And You're reframing that. Yeah. yeah. And it's really is rewarding. Absolutely. A lot of work, but rewarding. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. One of the ways in which members of the public can help the Guide Dogs program is to register as a puppy raiser. Loretta is new to the puppy raising team, so I thought I'd check in with her to hear about how the experience has been going for her so far. So Loretta, you're one of our fantastic puppy raisers. This is the first time you've, you've raised a puppy? Yeah, that's right. I've wanted to do it for a, a long time though. So what got you interested in, in potentially raising puppies for guide dogs? Um, well, I actually used to work with guide dogs and um, I got to know, you know, people who were blind and had a vision loss and um, I got to see the, the journey, the transition from these gorgeous puppies that we would have in the breeding centre to, you know, the fully fledged guide dogs and training with their handlers and then um, you know going out to, to have that lifelong companionship with them. I'd, I'd seen all those different stages but I hadn't been immersed in it mm. myself. Because mm. it's quite tricky um, in terms of the amount of time you have to dedicate to be a puppy raiser. Not everyone is able to dedicate that time. What happened for you that you were able to make that switch? Well, one of the positive aspects of the pandemic that, right. um, yeah. you know, I was working from home and um, our family was in lockdown. Mm -hmm. And so it was both an opportunity um, that I hadn't had before and, and a chance for the family to really focus on something positive during yeah, that time. That sounds really fantastic. Must have been great having um, someone, a little friend yeah. in your lockdown journey. Yeah, and uh, I was really grateful too that I had other family members at home when I was um, sitting at the desk trying to work because yeah. I'm focused on the computer a lot, which is obviously boring for a, a puppy. And, of course. Um, she was mucking around a little bit as a pup. Good girl. Now she's learned really well to, to just lie there and relax. But yeah. Um, yeah, we could share the responsibilities around and, you know, the kids could play with her a bit. Yeah, how old was she when you first got her? She was about 10 weeks oh, old. So small. Yeah. And how old is she now? She's 11 months. Okay, so you must have seen a huge difference um, for her in that journey. Absolutely. When um, she was a pup, um, she was quite different to our experience with our Border Collie pup previously. Okay. She was um, she was more headstrong and um, a bit more challenging. But then I realised as we started doing a little bit of training how that could benefit her because she was so much more confident than our Border Collie and she can, okay, yeah. she can handle... Um, anything when she goes out in the community uh, that you know might have intimidated our border collie a little bit so that that confidence is really important well if we have people who are watching thinking oh maybe that's something I might like to do what, what, what would you say to them I'd say absolutely if you have the opportunity um, you know at this stage of your life mm. um, you know you get so many rewards from them they give so much love and affection and, and it's a great opportunity to um, 
you know, participate in your community, to give back, to teach. Um, if you have children or other family members that you, you know, you want to teach them, you know, the benefit yeah. of doing... Of being involved in your community. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah it seems like it's rewarding in, in so many levels and it's something that keeps on being rewarding because you know that you've sent your dog off to, to um, play a role, a really important role in society. Absolutely. And, you know, I, I see too for the older dogs that are um, being assessed and in training, how excited the puppy raisers are when they get to see their, their photos and then they get to see them sometimes do their graduation walk and things like that if they, if they make it. So you're kept part of the journey the whole way. Yeah, that's so magical. Yeah. More Dog Jobs Australia after the break. Alfington Park today, catching up with a variety of people involved with Guide Dogs Victoria. One of the beneficiaries of the program sat down with me to discuss how it's all going and to introduce me to his new four-legged friend, Brett. So Anthony, this is your beautiful guide dog, Brett. Yes, it is. How long have you had him for? Um, I have had him for about four months now. I've received him on the 15th of November of 2021. So you've even got the date in your mind. It was, yep. it was obviously yep. a very important day. I remember the phone call I got. Uh, yeah, all the dates are planted, cemented in my mind. <laughs> yeah. And how has the experience been? Oh, it's been absolutely amazing. Yeah. Yeah, I, I feel like um, just the amount of freedom and independence mm -hmm. um, having Brett has given me has, has been amazing. Has, has there been quite some changes in your life in terms of what you can do now, having bread along? Yeah, definitely. With travel routes, um, I'm able to um, travel there faster and more efficiently. Um, I'm able to explore places um, that I'm unfamiliar with now, which okay. I couldn't previously do. Uh, what would you have previously done? Um, basically, I'd either have to sort of go through some sort of mobility training or just not do that particular activity. Well, I know that guide dogs uh, put in a lot of effort into training their dogs and getting them used to all sorts of situations, but it's probably beyond the budget to train them on aeroplanes. How do you feel like he's going to go in the airport, the aeroplane? Oh, I think it'll be great. He, he's such a um, relaxed and chilled out dog. He's, he's, he's perfectly matched for me. I'm quite laid back and chilled out so yeah. uh yeah uh, he takes everything in a stride i think um and in terms of uh, life at home how, how has he settled into your home life oh he's just part of the family now yeah right the the whole family are loving and adore him and with his positive energy you just can't help but smile every time he's around so you know he brings such a, a great amount of energy to the they make their house, the house at home don't yeah. they yeah I, I, I know we've, we've been speaking to some of the the people involved in the puppy raising and they say that it's not about just training a dog to be to, to work they are also wanting the the dogs to have a really happy home life at, at home so yeah. he's not always he's not always switched on he's he's working he, he relaxes at your house as well it sounds like yeah definitely mm. we're always um, playing games he loves playing tug with us fetch stick. Yeah. He doesn't actually play fetch with his fetch stick, he plays tug with it. <laughs> he likes um, his bone and yeah, we we um, always have um, our, you know, downtime and, and fun and games time. It sounds like he's been a fantastic addition to your life. Oh, <laughs> no, he's, he's been amazing, probably more than what I, you know, initially expected. It's, it's different to sort of think about getting a guide dog and what it would be like to have one and then actually having one and experiencing it. So yeah, it's, yeah, he's, he's a blessing. Yeah, that's wonderful. It's really great to hear. The process of training young puppies to graduate into fully-fledged guide dogs is a long and complex one. I wanted to find out more, so I caught up with dog trainer Aaron. 
So Aaron, you're a trainer here with Guide Dogs Victoria. How long have you been working with the organisation for? That's right, Sarah. Yeah, I've been with Guide Dogs Victoria for just over 14 years now. Yep. And before then, I was working in the UK for 11 years. So 25 years in all. Wow, that's a pretty good innings yes, to be working. Yeah. You must obviously enjoy Absolutely. your work. Yeah, 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 very enjoyable and, and very rewarding at the end of the day to see Guide Dogs go out and do what we train them to do. Yeah, so what specifically, what element of the training do you help out with? So really from the start, when, when Guide Dogs have finished their puppy raising, um, just over 12 months of age, they'll come in for an assessment mm -hmm. and they'll be assessed for their temperament, just uh -huh. to see whether they've got the appropriate temperament to be a guide dog. That sounds like a pretty fun job. Yeah. Just, just testing if puppies are friendly. That's right, <laughs> yeah. So we'll take them out into community, into yeah. varying environments, so, and they stay with us for a week. Um, and we challenge them just by taking them into more challenging and challenging, busier and busier environments throughout the week as it progresses. And um, yeah, see how they react. So are they comfortable around loud noises? Comfortable around lots of people? Do they need to sniff too much? Are they comfortable around other dogs? And if they seem to have the base temperament that we think they're going to be successful to be a guide dog, then we'll accept them into the training program. It sounds like one of the challenges for you would be just to stay on focus and not get too distracted by how cute they are. That's correct, <laughs> yeah. yeah. So having spent so many years with them, it's, it's quite easy just to look at them as a dog coming in for training. Yeah. But we do get attached to them, obviously, because all dogs are loving dogs, loving animals, and they want to please us and, and be with us at any time. So yeah, we do get attached to them ourselves. Um, but we are, we're always working towards that end product and looking towards providing somebody with a guide at the end of the day who can take them out in the community and, and, and make them safe. So that's the first initial bit of, of, of assessment. What, what happens from there? Yeah, so from assessment, the dogs will be selected either to go into training or for other roles. So they may then be offered to um, other categories that we, we select for our dogs as well because we've invested a lot of time and energy into those dogs. So we want to make sure that they're, they're giving something back to the community. But those dogs that enter into the training program, they'll enter into a 20 week training program. So around five months, they'll be in, in our kennels with us. Uh, they'll stay in the kennels um, for seven days a week and they'll go out with trainers once or twice a day and they'll be trained in the community so most of our training is done out into the, in the community around in residential areas shopping areas and as the training progresses over the 20 weeks the areas get a little bit more challenging and the tasks that we ask the dogs to do become a little bit more complex yeah. until they've built up their repertoire of what they need to do for their owner at the end of the day yeah so i hear those in that sort of period where you might be doing things like escalators and stuff that might be a bit a bit challenging a for, bit the, challenging. for your regular dog, maybe a bit scary even to, yeah. to slowly work up to something like that. Yeah, so initially we're looking at really just can the dog walk along a pavement and concentrate mm -hmm. on what's being asked of it? And then we build in, oh, we want you to stop at a curb. So identifying what a curb is and stopping before the road crossing, responding to all the commands. And then as you say, progressing it up into things like moving staircases can be challenging for people at times. Yeah, so, you know, dogs got four legs, things move a little bit differently. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we need to spend time in addressing that with them. So we wouldn't have the staircase moving at first. We'd be entering it when the, when the staircase right. is station, stationary. Gradual. And then just gradually introducing the dog into that that moving staircase and, and getting them comfortable in that environment. And then there's a final assessment process to, yeah. to see if they're really ready for that next new life. Yeah, that's right. So actually there's several um, processes that they go through. So we have um, quality checks, assessments with the um, trainer who's training the dog going under blindfold uh, at eight weeks, 12 weeks and 16 weeks of training. Right, so the, the trainer is wearing a blindfold That's and, correct. And, and the dog is in charge, yeah, essentially. Yeah, yeah we've we put yeah. in some safety measures, so, yeah, right. so there'll be somebody following and protecting the individual yeah. just in case there's, there's a mistake that's there's made. Hiccups. We yep. can't control the environment that's around us. All we can do is control what's in front of us with the hand room. Which dog. I guess is, is repl it replicates what life is going to be like yeah. out there in the real world anyway. That's right, yeah, yeah exactly. So again, we we progress them as, as we feel that they're developing in their roles within training. So the first blindfold assessment is really in a quiet residential areas mm -hmm. and we're just looking at those simple things that we said earlier about walking down the pavement in a straight line, stopping at curbs, crossing roads straight. Uh, and just identifying that they can they can concentrate on their, their job mm. and just provide those basic guiding roles. And then we'll progress that into a semi-shopping area and then the final assessment at 16 weeks is completed in the city. So you've got a lot more noise, you've got construction going on, you've got trams passing, you've got a lot more pedestrian traffic um, and a lot more distractions as well. There's all, a lot of scents, a lot of um, food shops, uh, a lot yeah. of litter lying on the floor. Yeah. Um, and that walk would take the dog around 45 minutes. So we're looking at the dog concentrating big process. For, a, for, a, for a long period of time. Um, and yeah, guiding that individual safely through that environment. And then should they pass that 
that final quality check mm -hmm. and assessment of their of their progress, then we look at matching them to, to one of the one of the handlers that are waiting for a dog that will be on our waiting list. Mm. What is the process like in terms of, do you look at, is it a bit like, you know, dating yeah. <laughs> profiles? You have to match the right dog to the right person? Yeah, so we, we gather a lot of information on the individuals that apply for a guide dog, um, and they go through quite an extensive assessment process themselves. Oh, they do? So we're gathering the information, what speed do they like to walk out, what's their home environment like, uh -huh. where do they expect the dog to be able to work, will they be using public transport, do they want to go on escalators? So we're gathering all that information to make sure that we can identify the appropriate dog for that individual individuals mobility requirements yeah and then there's a you know there's a little bit of oh you know do we do we suit each other temperamentally yeah. um, and will we just bond bond with each other and so do they meet the dog beforehand at some stage or yeah. are you just thrown together yeah no we like to have a lot of communication yeah. before the actual training with the, the handler begins yeah so we like them to have a have a have a part in that selection process so yeah. we go well we feel this dog is appropriate for you but let's have a walk with what it what do you think what do yeah. you think let's have some feedback can we work together on it um, and then should that be agreed upon then we'll invite them in for a training program. So once you've matched a client and a dog then there's some more intensive training for that pair? Absolutely yeah that's what we call the team training yep. so the the client, the individual, has had some training in orientation and mobility to enable them to learn some skills to travel safely within their environment mm -hmm. and the dog's had its 20 week training period. So we bring them together and we can either do that as a group, so we bring several people in oh, together okay, yeah. and train them with their dogs and they get some peer support then. And they yeah, that some... must be quite rewarding. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And you get a lot of real positive feedback from mm. the group session um, or we'll train them independently or individually at home. Uh, depending on their circumstances and their availability yeah. um, and that lasts for around five weeks. Sounds really rewarding. Yeah, uh, you could, I can understand why you've been sticking around with the guide dogs for we so don't, long. We don't go anywhere. Once we get into the <laughs> train, we, we sort of stay here. Yeah, so it's a, it's a lovely job. It's very rewarding. Obviously, we get to work with some amazing animals yeah. some wonderful people. Um, and to see these guys go on and perform the role that they perform in an ever-changing and ever-complicated environment that we're oh, working yeah. in now with things like, um, you know, vehicles being silent, electric vehicles at road crossings, yeah. people not being able to hear the engines, engines going. So it gets more complex and more dangerous uh, but people are getting out there they're entering into the community they're accessing the workplace and hopefully these guys are a part of helping them to do that so, yeah, yeah that's amazing Well, it's been an amazing day today hanging out with the team from Guide Dogs. There are so many ways you can get involved and help these dogs fulfill their potential. For more information, check out their website, guidedogs.com.au. My name's Sarah Jones. We'll see you next time on Dog Jobs Australia.